In the summer of 2015, I was expecting my first child. A little over halfway into my pregnancy, my OBGYN advised me to start counting the baby's cakes as an indicator of the baby's movement and overall health. The rule of thumb that was given to me was 10 cakes in two hours or less, and everything's good. Being the type A person that I am, I immediately started counting. And let's just say there were a lot of questions and a lot of confusion. Early on, was that really a kick? Or was that my body telling me that that last sandwich was a bad idea? <laughs> was that really 10 kicks in two hours? Or was it more like eight or nine? And should I be worried about it? And what about nighttime? Come 3 a.m., if I don't hear anything, then should I just make a run to the emergency room? Could it be a false alarm? But then if I hold back, am I already too late? So basically, my baby is not even born yet, and I'm already a bad parent. Great. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. Like many other pregnancies, mine also had a really happy ending. I was blessed with a beautiful, healthy little girl. But the constant doubt, anxiety, stress, uncertainty, and a general sense of helplessness and cluelessness about what was going on inside me on a day-to-day -day basis drove me nuts. In addition, what I found rather bizarre was that we walk around with these supercomputers in our pockets, smartphones, and here I am relying on rules of thumb. Why can I not have continuous access to some basic level of information to help guide my decision-making on a day-to-day -day level and put my brain at ease? In fact, let's take a step back even further. When we wake up in the morning, we have access to a wealth of information at our fingertips, whether it is the weather or the activity of our friends on social media or news trending across the globe. But what do we really know about what's happening inside us? Because if we did, we would be able to make more informed choices about our lifestyle. We would be able to develop goals and actions that are based on insights that are unique and personalized to us. Now, I am a material scientist, and I have been working in a material science company developing smart materials for a whole host of applications over the last decade. And as I look at what's being done, many of us here use wearables in the form of fitness trackers or smartwatches to enhance our lifestyle currently. The reach of a vast majority of these wearables, as they exist right now, is the wrist. But the question here is that we need continuous information from an area of interest on the body. And for that, we need to be able to place sensors or electrodes on that area of interest. And let's be honest, there are more areas of interest on the body beyond the wrist alone. For example, to learn about the unborn child, you need sensors that are close to the mom's belly. To learn about the brain, you need sensors that are close to the head. To get a continuous electrocardiogram or EKG, you need sensors that are close to the chest. And to learn about the activity of a specific muscle, you need sensors that are in direct contact with that particular muscle. Given that these sensors and electrodes are placed on the skin, the question now becomes, how does one get continuous access to one's skin anywhere and everywhere on the body? Thankfully, we all have this second skin, which is almost always in constant contact with us, and that's clothing. We already have access to this vast, untapped real estate on our skin, thanks to something that mankind has been using for several hundred years. No one, Hopefully no one goes out the door without any clothes on, so why not transform clothing, the original wearable, 
and make it a part of our digitized world in a manner that shines a continuous light into our health and well-being. We want to create a smart garment. Many companies are working to convert this into an everyday reality. What does this look like? Typically, there are four key components. Number one, a basic garment as we know it today, for example, a shirt or a piece of underwear. Number two, wires and electrodes that are attached to clothing that make constant contact with the skin and collect information from areas of interest on the body. Number three is an electronic module. Typically, this is powered by a rechargeable battery, and this can capture and relay the information that is collected by the wires and electrodes. And finally, number four, we have a user interface. Uh, usually, this is a smartphone or a tablet of some sort, which is equipped with an app on which one can view and interpret the information that is relayed by the electronic module. We have figured out how to make clothes for the last few hundred years. We have figured out how to make electronic modules, and we have definitely figured out how to make great smartphones too. What is yet to be fully figured out is an effective way to embed wires and electrodes inside clothing, because as we contemplate this ambitious endeavor of marrying clothing and technology, again there are. Three very important things to bear in mind. Number one, clothing is an extremely personal choice, and let's be honest, we all want to look great and feel super comfortable in the clothes that we choose to put on our body. Nobody wants to walk out the door with wires and electrodes hanging out of their clothing. We don't want that. So these wires and electrodes need to be attached to clothing in a manner that is not only comfortable but also relatively invisible. Number two, we are a lot less gentle on our clothing compared to our smartphones. For instance, I know that when I'm done wearing a set of clothes, I don't take them off gently and put them on my table. I just crumple everything up into a ball, toss it into my laundry bin, and I am done. So the modifications that we are discussing that need to be made to clothing need to be done in a manner that is capable of withstanding tremendous amounts of wash and wear, whether it is a pregnant lady with a rapidly growing belly or a super sweaty athlete, for example. Lastly, most important, number three, on an average. We are always going to buy more individual items of clothing compared to individual cell phones in our lifetime, and consequently, we are also going to pay a lot less money per individual unit of clothing as opposed to what we would pay per smartphone. And so, the manufacturing of smart clothing needs to be done in a manner that is accessible and affordable to everybody. Keeping these factors in mind. We took a pretty established process in the printed electronics industry called screen printing.、Uh, think of this as、uh, screen printing a T-shirt, for example. This is very similar, and right off the bat, this is pretty scalable. So it helps you crank out parts by the million. And what we did here is we used this process to create these. Smart stickers, which is to say, we screen-printed inks that are conductive, and we did this on top of extremely thin, flexible polymeric films that can be then heat bonded onto a variety of different fabrics. So think of this as a piece of wiring, which has now been converted into a flat 2D sticker-type format, which can go over seams, take on any manner of complicated geometries. Is stretchable, super comfortable, and most importantly, washable. What we've done here essentially is taken the concept of wires on human beings, something that one might associate with a person in a hospital today, and rendered that into a form that all of us can actually wear on a day-to-day -day basis and look good in and feel very comfortable in. In fact, I am wearing a smart garment today. You can see a picture here, and an example is also shown. This has wires and electrodes enabled by this technology called Intexar, which can pick up the electrical activity that is generated every single time my heart 
which is basically a large muscle, fires, and I can walk around with an exact awareness of my cardiac activity on my smartphone. For instance, thanks to this garment, I know that prior to getting on this stage, I guess I was expecting a really tough crowd. I was a nervous wreck, and my heart rate was a staggering 145 beats per minute. <laughs> and now that I am here, I feel pretty good so far. Everyone has been extremely nice and kind with their attention, and my heart rate is okay.、Uh, it is 156, but. <laughs> Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> But why is this important? Let's say an athlete wanted to get information that is specific to a certain muscle—biceps, triceps, glutes, what have you. Then one can attach sensors on top of clothes that are in direct contact with that exact muscle and help、uh, the athlete train in a manner that is customized to that individual. And moving forward, teams of individuals as well. Now, let's say one takes clothing to mean things that cover your body. So think about socks, gloves, beanies, headbands, neck and knee braces. Just just think about the possibilities this opens up. For instance, one can envision embedding sensors onto socks or gloves that can pick up variations in pressure. This can provide a lot of information about. Movement and posture and pronation, and this can help bring down injury rates. Headbands and beanies now become vehicles to measure the quality of your sleep. Neck and knee braces do more than just protecting these areas; they now become therapeutic tools. Speaking of therapeutic tools, by using screen-printed carbon-containing inks that can heat up when supplied with power from a battery the size of what you would use to power an average smartphone. One can create heated garments. Here is an example of a heated garment that we developed in collaboration with Ralph Lauren. It can run off an app. It can adapt to the environment around you, and it helps athletes or workers in cold climates stay warm and comfortable without adding any unnecessary bulk to their bodies. In fact. One can take the concept of smart garments even further and think about developing patches that can go anywhere desired on the skin, that can extend the reach of currently available wrist-based wearables, for example, smart watches. With the pace of population aging getting much faster than before, and with global healthcare costs becoming more and more burdensome year after year. Digital connectedness is slowly yet steadily pushing the point of care away from hospitals and laboratories towards our homes. And clothing, anything that covers your body, can help further enable this shift, because clothing would measure information on a continuous basis. This would help healthcare providers practice more proactive care. Which would reduce the number of reactive visits to hospitals by patients, and this would help bring down the frustration and fatigue that exists in our healthcare system. Coming back to my story about how I was a nervous, paranoid, Type A pregnant lady four years ago, here is a nifty little number that we developed in collaboration with this baby care company called Outlet Baby Care. This garment is called the Outlet Band. And it uses Intexar to provide information about the mom's activity, the baby's activity, and even helps listen to the baby's heartbeat. Everything is done from bioelectric signals inside the womb. Mom puts the band on at night, wakes up in the morning, has up-to-date information about herself and the little life that she's growing inside her, giving her peace of mind. In fact, on an average, we find that an expectant set of parents has two opportunities to see their baby at an ultrasound appointment, and maybe only eight shots at listening to their baby's heartbeat during the nine months of pregnancy. I remember very, very clearly how my husband and I would feel each and every time. We got an opportunity to listen to our baby's heartbeat at a routine appointment. It's a very difficult feeling to describe. What I can say is that 
It's a combination of euphoria, a sense of awe, and a connection the likes of which you have never experienced before. There is really, really no other feeling quite like it. And now, thanks to smart garments, we have enabled parents to be to experience this connection, this emotion, any time, any number of times. In the comfort of their own home. Thank you.